Now, the amazing thing is, that is utterly trivial now. That is utterly trivial now. And yet, just a couple of years ago, all of that would have been impossible. Absolutely unimaginable. Well, this basic framework, this basic way of building applications using language models, using language models, <clears throat> using language models, using language models that are pre-trained and they're proprietary, they're frontier, combine it with customized language models into a agentic framework, a reasoning framework that allows you to access tools and files and maybe even connect to other agents. This is basically the architecture of AI applications or applications in the modern age. And the ability for us to create these applications are incredibly fast. And notice, if you give it this application um, information that it's never seen before or in a structure that has, is not represented exactly as you thought, it can still reason through it and make its best effort to reason through the data, the information, to try to understand how to solve the problem, artificial intelligence. Okay, so this basic framework is now being integrated and, and everything that I just described, we have the benefit of working with some of the world's leading enterprise platform companies. Uh, Palantir, for example, uh, um, their, their entire AI and data processing platform is being integrated and accelerated by NVIDIA today. ServiceNow, the world's leading customer service and um, employee service platform. Snowflake, the world's top data platform in the cloud. Uh, incredible work that, that uh, is being done there. Uh, CodeRabbit, uh, we're using CodeRabbit all over NVIDIA. Uh, CrowdStrike, creating AIs to detect, to find AI threats. Uh, NetApp, their, AI, their data platform now has NVIDIA semantic AI on top of it and agentic systems on top of it uh, uh, to, for, uh, for them to do customer service. But the important thing is this, not only is this the way that you develop applications now, this is going to be the user interface of your platform. So whether it's Palantir or ServiceNow or Snowflake and many other companies that we're working with, the agentic system is the interface. It's no longer Excel with a bunch of you know, squares that you enter, enter information into. Maybe it's no longer could just command line. The, any, all of that multimodality information is now possible. And the way you interact with your platform is much more, well, if you will, simple, like you're interacting with people. And so that's enterprise AI being revolutionized by agentic systems. The next thing is physical AI. This is an area that you've seen me talk about for several years. In fact, we've been working on this for eight years. The question is, how do you take something that is intelligent inside a computer and interacts with you with screens and speakers to something that can interact with the world, meaning it can understand the common sense of how the world works, object permanence. If I look away and I look back, that object is still there. Um, causality, if I push it, it tips over. It understands friction and gravity. It understands inertia. That a heavy truck rolling down the road is gonna need a little bit more time to stop. That a ball is gonna keep on rolling. These ideas are common sense to even a little child, but for AI, it's completely unknown. And so we have to create a system that allows AIs to learn the, the common sense of the physical world learn its laws, but also to be able to, of course, learn from data, and the data is quite scarce, and to be able to evaluate whether that AI is working, meaning it has to simulate in an environment. How does an AI know that the, the actions that it's performing is consistent with what it should do if it doesn't have the ability to simulate the response of the physical world back on its actions? The response of its actions is really important to simulate. Otherwise, there's no way to evaluate it. It's different every time. And so this basic system requires three computers. One computer, of course, the one that we know that NVIDIA builds for training the AI models. Another computer that we know is to inference the, inference the models. 
Inferencing the model is essentially a robotics computer that runs in a car or runs in a robot or runs in a factory, runs anywhere at the edge. But there has to be another computer that's designed for simulation. And simulation is at the heart of almost everything NVIDIA does. This is, this is where we are most comfortable. And simulation was really the foundations of almost everything that we've done with physical AI. So we have three computers and multiple stacks that run on these computers, these libraries, to make them useful. Omniverse is our digital twin, physically based simulation world. Cosmos, as I mentioned earlier, is our foundation model, not a foundation model for language, but a foundation model of the world. And it's also aligned with language. You could say something like, you know, what's happening to the ball? And they'll, they'll tell you the ball's rolling down the street. And so a world foundation model, and then of course the robotics models. We have two of them. One of them is called Groot. The other one's called Alpamayo that I'm gonna tell you about. Now, the, one of the most important things that we have to do with physical AI is to create the data to train the AI in the first place. Where does that data come from? Rather than, instead of having languages, because we created a bunch of texts that are what we consider ground truth that the AI can learn from, how do we teach an AI the ground truth of physics? There are lots and lots of videos, lots and lots of videos, but hardly enough to capture the diversity and the type of interactions that we need. And so this is where great minds came together and transformed what used to be compute into data. Now, using synthetic data generation that is grounded and conditioned by the laws of physics, grounded and conditioned by ground truth, we can now selectively, cleverly generate data that we can then use to train the AI. So for example, what comes into this AI, this Cosmos AI world model on the left, on, over here, is the output of a traffic simulator. Now this traffic simulator is hardly enough for an AI to learn from. We can take this, put it into a Cosmos foundation model, and generate surround video that is physically based and physically plausible that the AI can now learn from. And there are so many examples of this. Let me show you what Cosmos can do. The ChatGPT moment for physical AI is nearly here. But the challenge is clear. The physical world is diverse and unpredictable. Collecting real-world training data is slow and costly, and it's never enough. The answer is synthetic data. It starts with NVIDIA Cosmos, an open frontier world foundation model for physical AI. Pre-trained on internet scale video, real driving and robotics data, and 3D simulation. Cosmos learned a unified representation of the world, able to align language, images, 3D, and action. It performs physical AI skills like generation, reasoning, and trajectory prediction. From a single image, Cosmos generates realistic video. From 3D scene descriptions, physically coherent motion. From driving telemetry and sensor logs, surround video. From planning simulators, multi-camera environments, or from scenario prompts, it brings edge cases to life. Developers can run interactive closed loop simulations in Cosmos. When actions are made, the world responds. Cosmos reasons. It analyzes edge scenarios, breaks them down into familiar physical interactions, and reasons about what could happen next. Cosmos turns compute into data, training AVs for the long tail and robots how to adapt for every scenario. I know, it's incredible. Cosmos is the world's leading foundation model, world foundation model. It's been downloaded millions of times, used all over the world. 
getting, world, getting the world ready for this new era of physical AI. We use it ourselves as well. We use it ourselves to create our self-driving car, using it for scenario generation and using it for evaluation. We could have something that allows us to effectively travel billions, trillions of miles, but doing it inside a computer. And we've made enormous progress. Today, we're announcing Alpamayo, the world's first thinking, reasoning, autonomous vehicle AI. Alpamayo is trained end to end, literally from camera in to actuation out. The camera in, lots and lots of miles that are driven by itself, where we human drive it, driven, using human demonstration. And we have lots and lots of miles that are generated by Cosmos. In addition to that, hundreds of thousands of examples are labeled very, very carefully so that we could teach the car how to drive. Alpamayo does something that's really special. Not only does it take sensor input and activates steering wheel, brakes and, and acceleration, it also reasons about what action it is about to take. It tells you what action is gonna take, the reason by which it came about that action, and then of course, the trajectory. All of these are coupled directly and trained very specifically by a large combination of human trained and as well as Cosmos generated data. The result of it is just really incredible. Not only does your car drive as you would expect it to drive, and it drives so naturally because it learned directly from human demonstrators, but in every single scenario, when it comes up to the scenario, it reasons about, it tells you what it's gonna do, and it reasons about what, you, what it's about to do. Now, the reason why this is so important is because of the long tail of driving. There, it's impossible for us to simply collect every single possible scenario for everything that could ever happen in every single country in every single circumstance that's possibly ever gonna happen for all the population. However, it is very unlikely, it's very likely that every scenario, if decomposed into a whole bunch of other smaller scenarios are quite normal for you to understand. And so these long tails will be decomposed into quite normal circumstances that the car knows how to deal with. It just needs to reason about it. And so let's take a look. Everything you're about to see is one shot. It's a no hands. Routing to your destination. Buckle up.
you have arrived. We started working on self-driving cars eight years ago, and the reason for that is because we reasoned early on that deep learning and artificial intelligence was going to reinvent the entire computing stack. And if we were ever going to understand how to navigate ourselves and how to guide the industry towards this new future, we have to get good at building the entire stack. Well, as I mentioned earlier, AI is a five-layer cake. The lowest layer is land, power, and shell. In the case of robotics, the lowest layer is the car. The next layer above it is chips. GPUs, networking chips, CPUs, all that kind of stuff. The next layer above that is the infrastructure. That infrastructure, in this particular case, as I mentioned with physical AI, is omniverse and cosmos. And then above that are the models. And in the case of the models above that I've just shown you, the model here is called Alpha Mayo. And Alpha Mayo today is open source. We, this incredible body of work, it took several thousand people. Our AV team is several thousand people, just to put in perspective. Our partner, uh, Ola, I think Ola is here in the audience somewhere, uh, Mercedes, uh, agreed to partner with us five years ago to go make all of this possible. We imagine that someday a billion cars on a road will all be autonomous. You could either have it be a robo-taxi that you're, you're, you're uh, orchestrating and, and renting from somebody, or you could own it and it's driving, for you, driving by itself, or you could decide to drive for yourself. And so, but every single car will have autonomous vehicle capability. Every single car will be AI powered. And so the, app, the, the model layer in this case is Alpha Mayo, and the application above that is the Mercedes-Benz. Okay, and so, so 